What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and as I finish up my thoughts on the Division 2 beta for Monday and also a video on Bungie for Monday, I asked you what you wanted me to cover today, and I can't believe I missed this article. I really can't. I hope you enjoy. By the way, I hope you've enjoyed the ride this week. If you have enjoyed the daily videos, please remember to smash kindly that like button below the video. It definitely helps the channel and uh, keeps me grinding. So we have an article saying uh, this person, Danielle, wishes Resident Evil 2 let her be a more compassionate hero. And you can see waypoints, obviously uh, a business that is going to have a lot of people that need to learn to code very soon because, uh, you know, for a big company, verified blue check mark to only get 50 uh favorites and get ratioed this badly on a tweet is indicative of g peak games journalism oh my god is this real how utterly self-centered do you need to be to play resident evil and think yes this requires a political rant that hits all the usual bullet points so everyone will know how smart i am this article is satire right who in their right mind goes into a survival horror game with this mindset it seems like the writer was told they were going to play Minecraft and was given this, having never played either. This is awful and lazy writing. Somehow games journalism has more had more integrity back when it was nothing but a bunch of hollow shilling in the 90s. <sighs> That's kind of true. The fact that it's gone downhill from that is proof positive that rock bottom as a concept is an impossible lie where there will always be a new depth to sink to. Let's look at this wonderful piece uh on waypoint from danielle rindo resident evil 2 is scary effective fantasy of permission of scarcity but i want to be a different kind of survivor that's right i'm playing resident evil 2 for the first time well mostly back in 1998 my 14 year old self scoured the pages of tips and tricks magazines walkthrough of the game covering every gameplay beat and plot point you know what's interesting to me you want to know how I identify a uh, fake gamer? Uh, that is not just a fake gamer girl, but anybody who is clearly uh, a fake gamer is when the very first sentence of their article is trying to prove some sort of gamer cred. When the very first sentence you write says, well, I'm totally gamer, guys. Listen to me because I'm just like you. That is an absolute red flag that tells us that no, you're not. I played a few minutes of on, on a friend's PS1. Okay, ha, I, did, I didn't even read this, but this is exactly right. So, okay, so you never played it. So I'm familiar. I always like to go to these articles fresh, so my reactions are as such. So I'm familiar with the scenery and structure of the quest characters, but for the first time, I'm truly experiencing it. It's a scary, tense, and much, very much a period piece. The late 90s survival horror game set squarely in the later Clinton era, with dollar gallons of gas and chunky computers now boasting some of the modern design niceties. Playing on normal, I can save as many times as I'd like, and the cutscenes are visuals and visuals are prettied up to Resident Evil 7 standards. One thing that's sticking out to me, still early on at the police station, is how perfectly the game uses scarcity and fantasy hyper competence to make me feel a certain way. How much permission does it give me to be a total sophistic a-hole? The lone survivor type. How the fantasy here pressures an uncomfortable tension between the ways I want to role play in this world versus the ways the game requires me to play it through the night. As I stalk the halls, uh, I am vulnerable. I don't have many bullets to protect myself with. The fewer... I have far fewer healing items. Zombies are tough, even on normal. While well, you're a games journalist, so you should just be playing on games journalist mode anyway. They take multiple headshots and they don't often stay down. Uh, yeah, that's the way the game plays. I have to raid this place to survive, looking by looking in lockers, desks, and weird corners of the desk cabinets. Yeah, that's the point of the game. And I'm collecting all kinds of things. Bullets, sure, but also gunpowder, knickknacks, keys, crappy boards to slam onto windows, and keep uh, to keep out the riffraff. At first, I felt oddly uh, a little taking things. The station was designed as a shelter during the zombie outbreak. There are cots and bloody sheets, IV stands, boxes of food, and medical supplies everywhere. Early on, the protagonists, Claire and Leon, 
hear a radio message instructing all citizens to the station. The notion is wild. The police station as a fortress safe haven is laughably naive, particularly for people of color. It certainly was in the 90s as well. And really, when uh, has policing in America ever been about keeping neighborhoods safe? Oh my god. As opposed to- oh my god, it gets worse! As opposed to keeping the racist status quo up and running. Though the game does later connect the upper echelons of police management with evil, because that's what you really wanted, right? Shady things doing Umbrella Corporation. Uh, I still feel a little bad about looting the place. The place is at least at first, since this is the staging area for what we call EMS in a mass casualty incident. So of course I went in thinking like an EMT. Obviously, that's what most gamers think about. Looking for survivors to help. Like the nice dude who saves me from the faulty door, Marvin, who is clearly suffering from some sort of awful wound. I want to help him. Claire wants to help him too, exclaiming that we need to get him to the hospital, but he refuses. And the game doesn't give me many tools for mending wounds, even putting on gauze and bandages. The only first aid items are magical herbs and sprays through the guns and blood look. I'm sorry, though the guns and blood look, well, more or less like the actual thing. This is a game about dealing with and surviving damage, not healing it. Aww. Aww. And after a while, I subtly give in to its goofy logic. That's right, because, you know, you couldn't possibly design your own game. And, you know, it's, it's just an interesting thing to me that people whine and complain about games having rules. It's like, I want to do everything I want to do inside of a game. And if you're not doing it that way, I don't like it. Yes, I absolutely need this green plant because seven more zombies will try to eat my face. Yes, I absolutely need this personal locker combination because I need that ammo. So I have permission to loot and run, mashing the X button to try and drive by, pick up items. Uh, by the way, you don't have to take on every zombie. You can try to avoid them. You know, just saying, if you want to be more um, caring, you could let some of them live. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, because... I'm not trying to hurt anyone else, anyone else, anyone who is alive anyway, because scarcity doesn't affect anyone else in this world. I'm not really allowed to do anything I please, as the verbs are pretty limited. I wanted to play with all the food items in the store, opening gameplay scene, and look at all the goofy fake labels and such, like I do in Life is Strange game, or a walking sim, but it's very different sort of permission fantasy, isn't it? I want to be able to touch and play with so many aspects of this world with no angry shopkeeper staring at me and my now obviously queer haircut. Oh my god. I think we may have found the wokest article uh, about a game ever. Uh, this is just, uh, this article could write itself and not be about Resident Evil in any way at all. Um, it's just. Uh, an SJW article, boilerplate, nothing new to say, right? Uh, but you're just in injecting uh, the whatever new popular game it is to get clicks. This is a survival horror game doing competently and even well. The kinds of things that the genre is good at. It's making me feel powerful and so much more hyper competent and allowed to do bad things. Yeah, um, protecting yourself is bad anyway. Resident Evil 2 successfully put me in this mindset inside of the first hour from the sort of player who usually loves to admire every tiny detail. And you can do that, by the way. You can do that. The character design supports us. I'm playing as Claire right now, a white chick in a leather jacket who open carries a sidearm everywhere she goes. Just on average day. Not for any special occasion like the day hell broke loose in Raccoon City. Claire probably brings her trusty handgun to get her hair cut. And it's just who she is. And as she remarks to Marvin early on, I can take care of myself. She can. Claire has an obvious combat training and handles herself well. She's a leather wearing motorcycle driving and oh yeah 90s badass woman character. The kind I frankly often enjoy playing as. In real life, I carry a tourniquet, exam gloves, and gauze everywhere I go. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to share an interesting point. Uh, again, we poke fun 
This is nothing personal because I don't think this person is really adding anything of value to the game's conversation. This is just a lazy Sunday. You know, it's a funny, you know, you know uh, a goof, a little gaff. I'm going to play some The Division 2 later today. I'm going to finish building some bookshelves as I'm going to redo the set behind me. I've got lots to do, and every day there's a new trash to your article like this out there, and it's just funny to read sometimes. You know, this person obviously doesn't care about video games. This is just a perfect example of played out talking points being attached to whatever new per new video game it that is out and popular at the time. This is just SJW clickbait at its best. I mean, essentially, you, you could rewrite this article uh, about any video game. You could rewrite this article about uh, The Division 2. You could rewrite this article about um, Red Dead Redemption. It's the same article. Just just try it for fun. You know, in, just change the video game and you'll see the article doesn't need the video game to exist, uh, but it needs the video game for clicks. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you had a, a little bit of fun and we'll talk to you again real soon. <laughs>